Robert Stack, fantastic. You know, great Ultra Magnus. Um, you know, whatever. You can listen to him talk all day. Um, and so uh, on that episode of Unsolved Mysteries, um, a Captain Holder uh, actually was on there and gave, uh, for the first time, an, an interview and spoke publicly about arriving on the scene um, of the, the Zamora incident, as it's kind of the Lonnie Zamora incident, as it's now kind of known. Um, uh, he talks about how originally uh, his first thought was so- it, it was something that had come from the range. Like it was it was something like a missile test or something had gone, you know, bleh, like gotten the guidance system got messed up, you know, wind shear, whatever. But it was something that had come from their base and just had shot off course and, and hit there. And that was his first time. Um, when he got there, he said that the first thing that he noticed is what the, were those indentations on the ground, these uniform indentations uh, sitting in a kind of like a, I think they were about like 90 degrees from each other, just sitting there yeah, in the ground. Right. And then he also it's noticed. Don't land. <laughs> <laughs> and then he also noticed, or he took notice of the, the scorch areas and the brush surrounding the area. And the reenactment is great because they have the guy who's playing older like walk around and like grab some branches off a bush and like put them in his mouth and he's like those are burnt yeah i'm like what <laughs> like why would you have to put them in your mouth <laughs> so, but, so everyone knows that's the way you got you got to taste it. you're like like oh, this looks burnt like you know you kind of rub it on your fingers like get some ash on it no you got to stick it in your fucking let me stick it in yeah he's like i know i know what burnt food i wonder if like he told them that he did that or they shot that and we're just like yeah do that and like well, he's tasting for accelerant right like he wants to know what <laughs> honestly let, let's kind of let's explosive be real. is this yeah. and and to be honest because it's like actors reenacting i'm sure they do shit to like make each other laugh on set they're like yeah throw that in fuck it there you go. <laughs> Uh, so they went in and they investigated. They couldn't really find much. They they documented what they could. They wrote down what there is. It didn't seem like anything, you know, anybody was in any immediate danger from, from what had happened. Um, and, and then the very next, the day after that, um, in April 26, you had Major William Connor from Kirtland Air Force Base and Sergeant David Moody, who were also in the area on temporary duty status. Um, they investigated for Air Force Project Blue Book. Um, and they came in. Shit. Uh, so they, they also came in and they came uh, along with, you know, Dr. J. Allen Hynek actually arrived two days later on We've April 28th. Tons of times. So and, and so Hynek came in. There's like, I mean, this is an official. A lot of people like this is one of the better um, or, you know, one of the kind of definitive cases from. Uh, Project Blue Book. Um, this is one of the more popular cases of one of those ones that you know they have the uh, three hundred and some that are just unknown. Five, we, the five percent unexplained, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, Hector uh, Quintanilla Jr., who used to be who was the former head of Project Blue Book, has spoken about the Lani Musamora incident and, and how it relates to project blue book. And, you know, he's quoted as saying that everything that was humanly possible to verify was checked. You know, they brought in the Geiger counters from Kirtland, uh, they brought in Geiger counters from Kirtland air force base to test for radiation and the landing area. They, uh, they took soil samples and they sent those off to the air force, uh, mat- uh materials laboratory. I mean, they did everything that they possibly could. And, and even though the, you had the, the soil analysis disclosed that there was no real foreign material present in, in those samples and that the, the radiation there would just seemed normal for what would be in that area. Yeah, but like that to me, that just says if, if there was something there, whatever took off didn't leave anything behind that was foreign and whatever it was wasn't radioactive. Right, like it's like they like when you read this and some of the things they make it sound like this is somehow discrediting this. I find that sometimes the way the way it's written, this part is it's discrediting, and I'm like, I don't think this is discrediting it at all. It's it's just saying that it's not whatever it was was not radioactive, and from their looking around, they couldn't find anything that wasn't from the fucking branch tasting. Yeah, from the branch tasting, like. Mm. <laughs> Nothing ex- extraterrestrial here. <laughs> and well, listen, like let's. I, I I question all these guys' fucking ability to observe to begin with. If you got to taste the fucking burnt branch, tell me it's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah, burnt, overdone, crisp. Yeah. 
uh, and Kitania kind of went a little bit further uh, talking about pretty much like what they had to go on was what Lonnie Zamora saw. And so, you know, he's quoted as saying, there's no doubt that Lonnie Zamora saw an object which left quite an impression on him. There's no question about Zamora's reliability. He is a serious police officer, a pillar of his church, and a man well-versed in recognizing airborne vehicles in the area. He is puzzled by what he saw. And frankly, so are we. Um, mm. you know, and kind of in the conclusion of like, you know, talking about this, uh, it continued, I kind of summed it all up and he said, this is the best document case, documented case on record. And still we have been unable in spite of thorough investigation to find the vehicle or other stimulus that scared Zamora to the point of panic. So, um, boom, <laughs> mic drop. It's wild. It's wild. Like this guy you know it's got to be a little bit of vindication for them where they're like there's there's people who research this stuff who are like yeah we don't know either man like we can't, yeah we've we can't di- like we can't disprove what you saw yeah we, we've investigated yeah, yeah. hundreds of these sightings and this one they can't disprove it but can they cover it up oh. because that's what oh. i saw when i was doing a little bit of digging oh, right? so when i was reading What'd about un- remember that remember uncover? that logo that you pulled up brain yeah don't pull right. so you, ripoff. Well, there's a reason why there's two of them because supposedly um, Zamora states that Holder had reported him or informed him that he was to tell all reporters and anyone else that it was a different logo and like gave him an example of the logo. So not the rounded one that looks like ours, but the other one. This one. On the left. Yeah. He told them, he's like, this is the one that you're going to use to tell reporters and everyone else. This is what you saw, which is a little bit bizarre. And then supposedly when they went back to the scene, all that, the glass-like material that that was created that they all witnessed was all gone. And um, one of the police officers, uh, what's his name? Give me one sec. Ted Jordan. uh, He worked for the Sakaro police and he was one of the like third or fourth on scene. His job was to go and take pictures for evidence of the scene. And supposedly he got on camera what looked to be maybe like possible footprints at the scene, Mm. right? Maybe those beings that they saw. Uh, Those, the camera was confiscated because they wanted to go through it and then they were told he would get it back. When he asked for it back eventually, they said, oh, all the photos were destroyed due to radiation. Classic. I feel like we've heard that before on a case, a similar thing where they've confiscated and then ruined the footage. Like, whoops. bunch. Accident. But that that's interesting because, like, to me, like, when you look at if there was glass left behind as reported, it wouldn't surprise me that an agency would collect it all for analysis, right? Yeah. So, like, it's gone. And, like, whether or not they, they are actually true to, like, letting us know what w- their findings were, just, like, nothing, right? They're, like, that's where it's, like, are, they, are we getting all the information from this? But, like, when you – because now, like, the blue book – the, the entire blue book, well, I'm sure some of the stuff's redacted, but the, the reports on this have been released, right? Yeah. And there are tons of photos of that scene. I don't know if these are the photos that they that they confiscated from the cop, but they have, like, tags on them saying possible footprints and stuff mm. like that on them. Which so they say, they say that the photographs were ruined because of radiation? Yeah. yeah. And then they said there wasn't a ton of radiation at the scene. No, no abnormal amounts of radiation, but yet it's ruining cameras? Well, even because I just quickly – because I read this a while ago. I think I remember reading it when we talked about the moon, fake moon landings, about how yep. like the radiation should ruin the film. It can be protected, blah blah blah. But if it does get exposed to radiation, it's unprocessed. The fi- the film it, it still can still be developed, but it causes like a radiation fog on the film. Yeah, I mean, people you can look up the the photos that they took of the original like Chernobyl reactor core meltdown like you can see those are examples of like radiation like that fog of, is what you're talking about i think yeah like an um, imp- the fog imprints over it's like a static like yeah. yeah yeah over the picture so it's like but it also would have to be a lot <laughs> like a yeah, lot. it has to be concentrated yeah <laughs> right like i mean this this thing. picture i'm talking about if people look it up it's like they were right they were like in the building next to the reactor like as it was melting down so it's kind of like it has a lot of radiation. <laughs> well, yeah. So and and just the, so that just kind of so if they say oh, the film's damaged due to radiation, it's like it's not. You could still you could still see what's on it. It just wouldn't be as clear. 
So yeah. and like for it this to is be a bad actually, excuse for it to be actually ruined because of radiation, the level would have to be in absolutely insane. Yeah, whoever took the picture would be melted. <laughs> <laughs> or Hulk. Yeah. Or yeah. Hulk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some type of superpower. Um so 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 cover up. I so I like it. So if this was Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.